Hi, my name is William Ping and I'm the author of Hollow Bamboo. The novel is very important right now because it deals with the history of anti-Asian racism in the country. And although much of the book is set in the 1930s and the 1940s in Newfoundland, a lot of those problems with sort of anti-Asian violence and xenophobia are still very much problems today. And I wrote much of this book during the pandemic and while writing it, um, it became very evident there was a large resurgence of anti-Asian violence in our country and across the world. And so I think that this type of book, which tells the story of my grandfather's life as he moved to Newfoundland from China and faced various forms of racism, violent racism, systemic racism, institutional racism. I think this type of book is very important right now as it sort of allows perhaps a reader who's not Asian or who's not Chinese to sympathize with the struggle and to challenge their stereotypes and to challenge the unconscious bias they might have about Asian people. So my protagonist in this book is my grandfather. And his name is also William Ping. And it sort of chronicles his life from his early 20s up to the end of his life. And it chronicles his life in Newfoundland and the struggles he had here and the successes he had here. And there's also a version of myself as a narrator who's not quite the protagonist, more so a series of uh, witnessing eyes for the events of William Ping Sr.'s life. I think first novels are special because they have a unique energy. There's almost an underdog energy, I think, to a lot of debut novels. Um, I think for a lot of people, they dream of writing a certain book for a big chunk of their lives. And then once they do it, they have so much energy and so much enthusiasm to get that story on the page. And you can feel that kind of boisterous, you know, quote unquote, I don't know what I'm doing type of energy through the page so it gives a very unique experience but then other times you have debut novels that are very polished and you can tell you know the writers worked on them for years and years and has really sanded off the edges and sort of perfected their vision so the debut novel always i think carries unique energy i think for somebody writing their first novel the best thing i could say would be to just write which is sort of um an eye roller of an advice to give but I think that, you know, when you're just first starting to write, you have the blank page and it's very daunting to see that. And the only way over it is to just write and write as much as you can and get it all down. And then once it's down, you can shape it and craft it and edit it. But it just, you need something there to begin with. Um, another piece of advice I would give is what my mentor gave to me when I started writing this, which is to make it beautiful. You know, no matter what the subject matter of your work is, even if it deals with very ugly or violent things, it's important to remember to bring beauty into it somewhere along the lines. On my side table right now, I just started reading Andrew F. Sullivan's The Marigold, which is about a sentient mold, uh, sort of attacking this building in Toronto. And I've been enjoying that. I've been reading Lindsay Wong's Tell Me Pleasant Things About Immortality, which is a fantastic short story collection. Um, and I just received in the mail a new book of poetry called The Repoetic by Benjamin Duckdale. Um, it's a very interesting, unique mix of uh, poetry and Simpsons references. And, you know, I've never really read anything quite like that at all.